Hey everybody, Evan Kerstell here with another great cybersecurity discussion today. The CEO of Eclipsis, Brian, how are you? Good, Evan. How are you doing today? Good. Doing well. Uh, you're based in Massachusetts here. Finally, we have some summer, which is a relief. Um, but nice to see you. I'm, I'm excited to dive into everything you guys do, in particular in light of Black Hat coming up. There's an extra focus now on security and some additional attention there. Before that, maybe just introduce yourself and at a high level, who is Eclipsis? Sure, sure. So uh, Brian Champagne, CEO of Eclipsis, uh, background actually came up as a CTO through organization. So I actually uh, bring a technical background to uh, the organization. Eclipsis is a company. What we do is uh, we kind of looked at the cybersecurity landscape and said, well, People, as data flows outside, people are trying to steal it. Well, why don't we approach things a little bit differently and just start removing the data so when the bad guys are trying to steal it, they don't get anything. So at a basic level, we're replacing data and trying to make you a little more secure when data flows places that you don't control. Well, you make it sound so simple, but of course, under the hood, things aren't so simple. And you have some interesting patented technology, pretty unique approach. Maybe describe what is MTE technology how does it work? How does your solution work in this quite sure. diverse landscape? Absolutely. It's always easy to, to sound brilliant when you've got a great team behind you and, <laughs> and you've got you know brilliant engineers and brilliant people that you work with, right? Uh, that, that makes life a lot easier. So what, what our MTE technology is, is a technology where we actually integrate into the application. So instead of being something that gets installed for someone, we actually become part of someone's application. So that way, when someone's going through and going to send data, rather than sending it down through the operating system, then doing encrypted events or doing anything of that sort, what we're doing is actually saying, well, let's get to it before the operating system even gets a hold of it. So oh, wow. we're generating codes, we change the data over. So this way here, if we have zero days in the operating system or there's security holes in the network or there's anything going on, it's not a concern to you. So you control the security, you control the libraries, you control everything that you do. So this way here, you basically say, all right, I might live in a big building, meaning a, a computer or a, uh, a cell phone or something like that. But what we're going to do is say, well, that's great, but let's not worry about that being the secu security concern for you because you're going to secure yourself and use a different exit, we'll say. Wow, that, that's pretty in intriguing. And just to set the uh, the landscape, how does that compare to, you know, other security solutions, data security solutions out there today, mm -hmm. maybe the traditional approaches? Yeah, most of the security solutions out there are using things like TLS and encryption and all the things that we've really worked hard uh, to use. But most of those tend to start at the bottom of the operating system. They basically say, all right, well, we're going to secure you at the packet level. We're going to take that packet of data. Or we're going to do a connection between two points and secure it. Or we're going to take your data and we're going to apply an encryption key and do all these things and scramble the data and, and make it so people, when they hack it open, you know, they're going to have a real hard time opening it. The problem that we saw was when they do eventually open it, what's inside your data? And what we did is we, we just, this is where all our patents come in. And what we did is we really said, well, let's just remove the data because at the end of the day, what are we always worried about? We're worried about where data flows go. We're worried about mm -hmm. who's seeing the data, who's capturing them, who's doing all this stuff. We just said, all right, well, you know, at the end of the day, what is it someone wants to steal? And we brought it back to the basic problem that people were talking about. Everyone in cybersecurity talks about encryption. They talk about security. They talk about this. But what sometimes I think the industry may lose focus on, we'll say, is that at the end of the day, everyone wants to steal the data. That's really what the valuable asset is. And we just said, well, let's just go after it differently than everyone else, because a lot of the other places we're losing sight of the fact that the operating system was a problem. Now, if I could expand on that a little, it's funny because you would take a corporate customer and they'd say, well, you're going to have our corporate data. So we're going to put mobile device management. We're going to put device management on your system. We're going to do all of these things to secure everything you touch. 
and then missed a customer, we're going to use TLS and drop it at the bottom of your phone because we know you've had cyber training. We know you secure your phone. We know you don't download apps or do anything you shouldn't do or connect randomly to Wi-Fi. So you're secure. Well, that really isn't true. And so what we did is said, well, let's get into the idea that those things really aren't happening. Let's take a realistic approach and let's go after it differently. Different indeed. Um, yeah. Now, are there certain industries or unique verticals you're going after? I mean, there's a lot of sensitivity in healthcare, for example, and, you know, government, government agencies. What, what, where's your sweet spot, would you say? Or is it applicable everywhere? I, you know, I really think it's applicable everywhere. And the reason for it is because when you think about it, um, if we took a government agency or we took healthcare, they're providing a service to you and you connecting to them, you're paying them for the service, they're protecting you, they're doing all those things. But, you know, as I've heard several times and people are starting to realize when you connect to something that's a, a free service and you're putting personal information in, the object being sold isn't the application, it's you. So at that point, your personal data is where you want to make sure it's being, you know, uh, uh, kept personal. So a lot of people that we're dealing with are companies that, you know, you might be buying something from, you might be uh, uh, providing some kind of information to because they want to keep your information private because you are the asset that they're dealing with, whether it's the heuristics of what you do, whether it's the... Um, you know, data that you buy, the surveys you take, whatever it may be, all of a sudden those start becoming important information. And for those industries, they're starting to look at it differently. This really comes down also in the U.S., as you know, Evan, the administration's taken a real different look at cybersecurity mm -hmm. and said, if something happens, you have to report it. Mm -hmm. Well, really think about that question. Why are they saying you have to report something if it goes. Now, they're not saying, okay, uh, if there's a cybersecurity incident, you know, oh my God, you got to report it because it's something we're going to do something about. They're not doing anything about it. They can't. You know, the FBI will try to step in. What we're really talking about is in industry and, and um, uh, industry meaning uh, corporations and all who've had these attacks happen and are turning a blind eye to them. So the administration said, no more turning a blind eye, start protecting people and start protecting people's data. So we've actually seen applicability across a lot of industries. So long answer for a short question, I do apologize. No, no, it's it's all good. And and, and tell us about the landscape now. I mean, they're it's so fragmented, the security landscape. I mean, so many vendors, you know, a bank might have, you know, 90 vendors yeah. in their institution. Um, you know, how do you navigate this space? How do you how do you see yourself? Are you sort of the last security solution uh, someone might need? Maybe if if uh, if if you're fundamentally protecting the data where it is. I, I think we're just the next evolution of all the work that people have done. And the reason I say that is if anyone thinks the people who worked on TLS and worked on encryption were trying to keep bad guys out, you're not paying attention. We have diligent people in our industry and in, in uh, our technology that are out there just trying the best to protect people. What we're saying is the technology we had had limitation based on what level we tried to protect from, meaning the network. We're just saying that why don't we take it to the next level and go out and protect the data differently because of the attack vectors? Because as we all know, uh, a hacker is going to attack the weakest link in the chain. And when we look at the number of zero days, whether it's operating systems for your uh, cell phone, your IoT device, your uh, computer, whatever it may be, those have proven to be a real problem for the industry to handle. And when you really think about it, why is it such a problem? Well, let's say we have a company making an operating system, and, and I don't want to name names. We all know who, who they are. They make an operating system. Their job is to make your application run as quickly as possible and try to be secure. But there's a lot of code and there's a lot of moving parts to that. So at that point, they say, well, the security industry can worry about that. But the security industry doesn't have access to the operating system. So here you are, you're running an application in that environment and you become an accidental victim because the operating system company's concentration is in security as, as much as maybe you wish it was. And the security industry doesn't have access to secure it to where you want. So what we're saying is, well, let's 
just not make pretend that's happening. Let's put it to the application and let's have the application do the security and, and go after it differently. Brilliant. Tell us about the genesis of not, not just the company, but the development of the MTE technology. Where's the team? Where, where's the from? What's, what's the history of, sure. of the tech? Yeah, so, so we started in 2017. We were spin off of another company that had uh, developed some products. And what happened is as they were looking at the products, they realized that the technology for sending and receiving data was really something different. And we had a lot of customers say, wow, I really love how you're sending and receiving data. Can we use that? Can we use it for different things? And that's where the team really started working on. And it took a few years to get it to fruition because, you know, I make it sound simple. It's always easy as the CEO. Oh, you know, the team just goes and changes data and does all this. And, and I know my engineers will watch this and go, yeah, that was, that was uh, so easy for two years, you know? <laughs> um, but what happened is we, we had spun off, we developed the technology, we launched at the end of 20. Uh, and from there, we've gone out and just done customer acquisition. We've won uh, a few different awards. And uh, we're a technology that you might be using day to day because we build into the back end of people's applications. We build in with the corporations. So, you know, we handle voting in Canada. We've handled uh, IoT devices across the world, websites that people have gone to that they don't even realize with, you know, tens and hundreds of millions of users using our technology and not people not even knowing that uh, we're in there. Yeah, that's kept secret. It can be a good and a bad thing yeah. sometimes. And sure, so what is sure. your go to market like? How do you engage customers? Is it is it the developers and the integrators or can you work directly with enterprises kind of as well? You know, we, we can work directly with enterprises because we have two different sides of our business. One is based on uh, the mobile, the web, the IoT, all of those sort of things and uh, Kafka to you know protect people's Kafka data when it's in transit, which is something a, a, a little bit unique in terms of how we do things. But the other part is we can actually work where we're an OEM for people, where we will walk in to a corporation that's developing an IoT product or developing something of the, you know, uh, an application, and we'll just become the security layer for them. So you see companies like Liveplex and Apex IQ and all these great companies we do business with where we're, we're out there integrated into them and, you know, working with them and, and doing uh, really positive things with them. Yeah, so interesting. I mean, finally, security isn't an afterthought as it has been for for so long. Um, so, what's next? I mean, what are what are some of the opportunities over the next year or two that you're pursuing? Any any next big things that you're keeping your eye on? Trends or sure. or other things? Well, you know, we're, we're looking towards Kyber and uh, going towards quantum uh, resistant. Uh, uh, Oh, wow. technologies. Uh, so we're actually at the final stages of developing that because one of the things that we've done, Evan, that was a little different is when we looked at this problem, we didn't just see a problem of data in the application not being secure. We realized that there was a problem with inconsistency of data protection across operating systems and environments. So, you know, in our talk here, you've heard me talk about IoT and mobile and web and all of these. Well, you think about that from a security perspective. You're talking about Android, Apple, uh, mm -hmm. Microsoft, uh, possibly Robot OS. There's all of these different operating environments you're talking about there. We looked at that and said, well, how do you provide something that replaces data or does something in all of these different environments? And we said, well, we're going to have to develop our own library. So we actually developed our own cryptographic library called ECL or the Eclipse's cryptographic wow. library that runs across all of those operating environments. So we run the same. So what that's allowed us to do is where other people are saying, well, let's see what Microsoft does. Let's see what Apple, Android, et cetera, do. We actually did it ourselves. So all of our customers are going to have the advantage of actually being ahead of the curve in terms of all of the new uh, uh, securities that are coming out versus quantum because we're doing them. And when you use our stuff, you're not using the operating system libraries, you're using ours. So pretty cool. That is very cool. Well, wow, super exciting. Uh, and tell us about your your journey uh, into sure. this venture. And you, you've been around uh, the houses a few times uh, doing this kind yeah. of work. What uh, what attracted you to this this current opportunity? Yeah, well, you know, I, I had uh, uh, 
started my life with companies like EMC and, and companies like that and uh, went out, started my own company, built it up, sold it off, uh, helped sell several other companies as an executive. And you're sitting there and um, as I joked with everyone, I was a professional golf scramble player, you know, playing every Monday for different charities and enjoying life. And then I uh, had the pleasure of meeting our, our chairman, uh, John Natchev and uh, different members of the team and, you know, David Gomes and, you know, some, some other members. And once I realized how cool the technology was and what we could do to protect people, I just said, you know, that, that engineer light bulb went off and said, this is really cool. And when you get out in the industry, you, you really thirst for the ability to do something cool. My job at EMC was on integration of third-party products and developing mm. snapshotting technology. So for me, I was used to working on high-level technologies and doing something that was, was different than what other people did. And what I saw in Eclipsis was a company that had that type of excitement that really made you get up in the morning and say, man, we're going we're gonna to do something different here. And so it was really uh, a lot of fun and it's been a, a great journey uh, getting in. We've got a great investment group and, and just great uh, team members to work with. Fabulous. Well, so fun. So such important work. So, you know, wonderful mission. Uh, what are you, you know, as we're, I can't believe it's August already, but what, what are you yeah. excited about rest of the summer? Any travel professionally, personally, you must have a busy season coming up out there in tech. Land. Yeah, you, you, you know, there, there's so many trips uh, uh, to do and so many different things going on. Uh, the excitement behind cyber and, and just, um, you know, personally, uh, you know, just just great things going on. It's it's some of the most exciting time in technology that I've seen in a long time. And, and you, I know with your background, you've seen things change over and over and you've seen the segmentation of, of certain uh, industries. And what we're seeing is really people starting to say, we need to think differently. So for me as a uh, former technologist or, you know, you just look at these things and say, wow, this is really cool. And, you know, you see a lot of great people come together. So, you know, we're looking to get out to some of the different conferences out there and talk to some people, meet, you know, old friends and, um, uh, hopefully travel a bit and play some golf, Evan, you know, <laughs> so. Always a good right. goal. Well, thanks so much for yeah. sharing, you know, the vision and the mission. It's super exciting. Yeah. And uh, thanks everyone for watching, you know, reach out to uh, myself or Brian, uh, particularly if you're at Black Hat, this is an interesting time. Uh, mm -hmm. On social media, there's a ton of, of excitement around these topics. We look forward to your feedback. Thanks so much, Brian. Thanks for Evan, uh, joining always me. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thanks.